Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go! Ladies and gentlemen, guys and gals, hey, welcome to Super Agents Live. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, uh, today is Wednesday. It's a solo show. Before we get to it, and look, here's what the show is about. I challenged myself uh, to create uh, um, kind of a bit of a different kind of episode today and different kind of post. And we're going to talk about taking action. Now, you know, I've released 80-something episodes so far. I've done 100-plus interviews. And we always talk about real estate. That's great. That's great. There's only so many tips and tactics that you can write down. And, and here's what I have found. I found that people are listening. People are writing it down. But what, what happens? <clears throat> they end up creating a giant to-do list. And at the end of the day... Um, how much closer are you to, to success? You know what to do from the show. You've heard it. <clears throat> but what about taking action, implementing it? People fall down about that. So today, we are going to go over <clears throat> taking action. Uh, and I, and it, 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 it may... Uh, look, I wrote it all down. You can see the blog post. Uh, go to superagentslive.com. Read it. But even as I wrote it, like it made sense to me. And then I went back over it. And, I, and like it, it's, um, it has a, a really sort of ebb and flow here. <clears throat> now, it's all flow. It's all really good. But again, it's different than what I typically do. Before we get to it, just to remind everybody, um, one, hashtag for the show, unpack that idea. Tweet something out and uh, get on the Twitter Tweet something out, use that hashtag, you will get more followers. Second, today, I'm recording this episode uh, July 8th. It will go live July 9th. And July 18, we're doing a live event here in San Diego. It's 150 bucks. We're going to put 10 people in a room, and we are going to mastermind all day. Now, let me tell you something. 150 bucks. I don't know if you think that's cheap or expensive or what. It's dirt cheap. I'm actually, um, I am actually, uh, I was inspired to do a live event because I got invited to a two day mastermind uh, with uh, uh, David Osborne. If you, great episode if you haven't heard his episode. <clears throat> and look, you know, that thing overall is going to cost me more than two grand. It's like a thousand bucks a day. <clears throat> so for you guys, um, I'm trying to do it, you know, 100. And look, here's what I think I think that if I would have said, hey, this is 500 bucks. I think more people would take action t- toward that. Um, so I'm learning about that. Um, I think I actually need to, I, you know, I've been trying to price stuff where everybody can have access to it. I, I think I just need to just put like a, whatever. Okay. Um, uh, you know, I have talked lately about radio. If you are a top producing agent in your marketplace, let me know and uh, we'll get you on the radio. Um, it is crazy what live radio can do. Hey, one thing I really, really want to mention to you guys. So July, this is 2014. July, let me look at the, oh yeah. So July 17, <clears throat> July 17. Uh, well, again, we're doing the live event July 18, the day before July 17. What we are doing is we're doing, we're going to do this from now on the third the third Thursday of every month, we are going to do a live Google Hangout. <clears throat> now, we're going to do the first one this Thursday, July 17, 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific or 11, 12, 1 p.m. Uh, Eastern, <clears throat> and then whatever Central is, right? I think that's noon. So uh, jump on live Google Hangouts, <clears throat> um, learn something new about, like, you know, just how to do it or whatever. And, uh, but yeah, look, you can, we're going to do it live. I'm going to have Greg McDaniel on with me. We're also going to have a guy named Frank Klesitz who's kind of organizing it and promoting it. Um, so, uh, we're going to talk. Um, I'm not sure what we're going to talk about. Um, but, uh, it's gonna be pretty cool. So we're gonna start doing every third Thursday of, of each month, 10 a.m. Pacific. So, uh, put it on your calendar and, uh, I'd love to see you there. You know, you, and, and this is the first time this is why this is great. This is, right, we do these episodes or whatever, but you never, ever can ask questions. On this live Google Hangout, you can ask us questions. 
How cool is that, man? All right. So look, my goal is I'd love to have like 300 people there. And, you, and if you don't catch it, you can always you can always listen to it later. But you can't ask questions. So uh, I'd love for you to join us. See you there. <clears throat> All right. Taking action. Now, here, <clears throat> Stephen Pressfield, he wrote a book. And it was, it was called The Warrior Ethos. <clears throat> now, here's a quote from that book. Uh, in the era before gunpowder, all killing was of necessity done hand to hand. So for a Greek or Roman warrior to slay his enemy, he had to get so close, there was an equal chance that the enemy's sword would spear or kill him. <clears throat> this produced an ideal of manly virtue. In Greek, that is Andrea, that prized valor and honor as highly as victory. Andrea <clears throat> meant that judgment was based on actions taken, not the outcomes. <clears throat> that one sentence right there kind of sums up a lot of what I'm going to be talking about. <clears throat> actions taken, not outcomes. <clears throat> Society understood that the outcome was, at least in part, in the hands of gods, right? This is in the book. <clears throat> what was in a man's control, is, 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 or woman's control, <clears throat> was how he acted. So we tend to mix this up. There is an army of authors studying successful people, and they write lists, five, seven, 10, 20 things that they did to become successful. It's a lot like this show. People come on, I ask them how they did it, and we, you know, we try to, I kind of try to tease it out of them. And, you know, people out there write, you know, I got a tweet one day, and it was really, really cool. I forget who it was from, but literally she took a picture of her notes. And it was like, show notes for today was the title. Took a picture and uploaded it to Twitter. And literally, she had like four pages of handwritten notes from one episode. That is wonderful. That made me so happy. Uh, um, but, but you have four pages. Now what? <clears throat> right? So these authors out there saying, you know, people are doing this. Again, you in the audience listening to, to my guests, you know, you think that all you have to do is emulate the list and you too can be, become successful. Now, maybe you can. But, but, you know, having that viewpoint is like looking at, at those, you know, living Spartan soldiers and explaining why they survived, right? Leonidas would say that they're idiot. They're arrogant. We, as a group, as a society or whatever, we become so focused on results that our actions have become a secondary concern. We judge men based on what they have instead of what they do. We signal our ideas our ideals instead of embracing them. Pressfield wrote another book. It's a short book. It's called Do the Work. And, uh, and uh, you know, there's a New, York cart New Yorker cartoon that cleverly skewers our preference for thinking about things rather than doing them. And here's, you, you, you know, you have to see the cartoon, but, but, uh, but there, again, there's a cartoon and the quote is, a per our perplexed person stands before two doors. <clears throat> One door says heaven. The other says books about heaven. <clears throat> he's perplexed. He's considering the book. So, you know, this is funny because it's because it's absurd and because we know would have the same consideration. <clears throat> right? Is it heaven or is it a book about heaven? <clears throat> so the world is full of men, of people who are stuck in life. Right. And, and I've, I've, I've seen, I saw this in college, man. You know, I, I this girl, I really liked really beautiful South African girl. <clears throat> um, uh, you know, we were getting along, we we're going out, she was graduating and uh, she's had to make a lot of decisions. I took, I, I, we stopped going out after this one lunch. I took her out to lunch. We looked at this big board, right? Like we just had to order sandwiches. She looked at it and she started crying. She literally could not make a decision. And I was like, whoa, there is something wrong with this girl. Now, maybe there wasn't. She may have just been really stressed. But, but you know, there's this mass, you know, it is a paralysis by analysis. We've all heard that. And I see it over and over again. Right? Why do people analyze instead of go and take action? Right? Have, have people forgotten how to take action? <clears throat> so, um, <clears throat> so the more information that's out there, <clears throat> the greater the returns to just being willing to sit down and apply yourself. Information <clears throat> isn't what's scarce. It's the willingness to do something with it. Right? Again, <clears throat> my show, I swear to you <clears throat> that my, after my first 30 interviews, I was like, I have it figured out. I have real estate solved. <clears throat> and I, you know, I do to some extent, <clears throat> but it's not having the information. It's doing something with it. <clears throat> and I, you know, you heard, heard me talk before about, about imperfect action. <clears throat> and 
and I swear I'm not going to get sidetracked here. But so what I want to get to is I want to get to uh, 10 tips about taking action or 10 overlooked truths about taking action. Okay. Number one, action is cheaper than planning, right? Everybody wants to try to come up with that fir- perfect plan, like one, two, three, and you know, there's tons of thinking or whatever. Look, action is cheaper than planning, especially when like today building something, right? <laughs> Stop planning your Facebook ad campaign. Just go do it. So um, we all know who the Wright brothers are. Do you know why the Wright blood brothers beat out all the giant corporations at that time competing with them in the race in taking the first flight? To action. They took action. Robert Greene, uh, in his book, uh, In Mastery, he writes that the Wright brothers had a, they had a super tight budget. They were forced to make small, cheap tweaks to each new model. They would fly a plane, they'd crash it, tweak it, fly it again. Now, the corporations had budgets that allowed them to go back to the drawing board, <clears throat> i.e., right, plan or abstraction, with each failure. They spent a ton of money and time on each redesign. Now, the Wright brothers had 100 test flights in the time that it took these big corporations to complete just a handful. Every test, every flight, they learn lessons. And, and, and the overall lesson for us is that the one, the people who fail fastest gather the most information. We have all, I think we've all, um, you know, fail forward. That's a new mantra when it comes to, uh, to people doing, you know, web apps or, or uh, technology companies. So speaking of that, um, uh, so look, um, the philosophy of failing fast has spread through Silicon Valley and, and really and beyond. It's, it's, it's in the Midwest now, right? It's everywhere. And a lot of it has to do with a guy named Eric Reese. He wrote The Lean Startup. Now, I've read the book. The, the Lean Startup is literally like a religion to a ton of people. Um, many, many, you know, on tech entrepreneurs. Um, I wasn't that impressed with it. Um, but, it but, but anyhow, so, so here's, what, here's one of the things that Eric says in his book. He says, quote, I've come to believe that learning is essential, is, an, is the essential unit of progress for startups. The effort that is not absolutely necessary for learning is what customers want. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Uh, basically, he talks about validated learning, right? And validated learning is, is testing and seeing if it works. Test, fail, try something new, test, win, you know you have it, right? And then, and then you optimize. So technology, for example, has reached a point where building is, a, is, is much of the time cheaper than planning, right? My time is valuable. I, you know, I can go out and create a, a website, throw it up and, and test, um, test some Facebook ads, you know, try to fill my funnel, try to build my list faster than, than, you know, than sitting there planning, planning, planning. And, and at the end of the day, when I'm planning, it's just, it, it's just theorizing. So, you know, we can build the thing and know the answer before that we can plan for all the possibilities and determine how it might work. <clears throat> um, so, you know, uh, Eric in his book, Reese, the question is not, can this product be built? Almost any product that can be imagined can be built. The more pertinent question is, should this product be built? And can we build a sustainable business around this set of products and services? Now, for you in real estate, we know that, you know, that's validated, Right, uh, lots and lots of people who are not any smarter than you have gone out and and you know become multi multi millionaires. So, again, Eric and his thing, he says, look, you know, problems cannot be answered in the abstract; they must be tested in the physical world. You know, make and test small little improvements. Now, this applies to everything. It applies to your life. <laughs> make small improvements everywhere in your life. How much have you grown from last year at this time? You know, if you can make, if you can make, I mean, think about this for a second. If you can make 1% improvement every day, can you today, if you're listening to this in the morning, can you, somewhere in your life, can you improve yourself by 1%? I bet you can. Now, uh, imagine that every day, every day, you just got 1% better right? 1% better in your relationships, 1% better in selling, 1% better being a father, being a, 
a husband or whatever, or wife, whatever it is. And at the end of the year, you'll be 365% better. But in reality, you are going to be better than 365% better. <clears throat> you know why? Because there's something called compound interest. Now, I don't, I don't want to get into that. Again, I'm going to try not to get sidetracked. <clears throat> so listen, try to test and make small improvements in your life. <clears throat> now for me, right, planning... Man, you know, I'm an action guy, but, but, you know, from time to time on, you know, look, even in the show, I can talk about all, all there's so many, uh, I, I have a list of all kinds of products I want to make for you guys. Right. <clears throat> and I talked about it, I think the last couple of shows, I want to help you get better. That's my focus. Now for, for me to do that, <clears throat> I have to do more than just create this podcast. So I have a whole list of things and I sometimes get, I get, it traps me I'm like, okay, what do I do next? Especially when I have to make this show, this show, uh, believe it or not, man, <clears throat> um, this particular show you're listening to, by the time you listen to it, it will have taken me probably eight or more hours. So <clears throat> anyhow, so sometimes uh, planning has paralyzed me, but <clears throat> you know, and, and here and it, and it happens to all of us. It has happened to all of us now. <clears throat> and why? Because we're taught that we're taught to always have a plan before taking action, right? Look before you jump. You know, aim before you fire. You know, I've, I've really put myself into a place where for me, I, I, I go ready, fire, aim. Because <clears throat> I know that, you know, if I can do that, I can plan, I can, I can make that work, right? I can jump <clears throat> before I look. And, and, you know, not everyone can do that, right? It's, you have to, you have, <sighs> action, the more you take it, it's a muscle. The more you take it, the stronger you get, right? The more it's just like making taking making decisions. Decision making is uh it's something that you learn. And the more decisions you make, the easier they get, the easier they get, the easier they get. Okay. So that was uh that was number one, and that was that action is cheaper than planning. Now let's get to number two. Let me see, let me look at the time here. Oh, we're quick, 14 minutes. Okay. <clears throat> uh, number two, action allows emergence. Now Taking action creates possibilities that didn't exist before. One minute. <clears throat> Had to take a drink of water. All right. <clears throat> Taking action creates possibilities that didn't exist before. We always look at our future from the place we're standing. Okay. But we forget. It's, this is only one spot. Now, now here, <clears throat> imagine for a second. Imagine, I don't know if you've ever been to, to New York City. But imagine walking in New York City. Even if you've not been there, you know kind of what it, it's like. You've seen, you've, you, we all watch movies. So you're walking in New York City, Manhattan. All you see are sky, skyscrapers, like, you know, crazy people. You see taxis, you know, fast, fast, hustle, bustle life. You're cruising down, cruising down. And you go up, you go down a block or two. And on the next street, you make a right. And now all of a sudden, you're looking at Central Park. Right, the trees of Central Park, a completely new possibility has emerged. Right, <clears throat> Central Park. There's some some stats on or something. Like that. It's it's giant. You think it's little? It's giant <clears throat> in terms of acreage. Same thing with uh, uh, the the park in San Francisco. It's uh, <clears throat> when you look at the stats in terms of acreage, it's crazy. I, I was just there this summer, uh, San Francisco. There's a waterfall. I was there in the summer. There was a waterfall in the middle of San Francisco, <clears throat> right there in the park. Uh, and there are still, I read, I read this, I didn't see it, but somewhere in San Francisco, <clears throat> listen, somebody knows this for a fact, like, uh, it's tweet me or email me or whatever, <clears throat> but, uh, I forget, like there's Buffalo or something there. Um, <clears throat> anyhow, sorry. So you're in, you know, when you see that, you know, you go from skyscrapers and crazy people <clears throat> and, and taxis to the trees of Central Park, a cr again, a completely new possibility emerged has merged. Now, let's say you're fat. There's lots of people that are fat these days. <clears throat> so today you're obese and you may not see a possible future where you're fit <clears throat> or skinny or handsome or good looking, whatever. <clears throat> but, but I mean, you know, again, imagine that if you spent three months working out, eating right, you know, <clears throat> there will be a possible future of physical fitness that didn't exist before. Right. These kinds of possibilities come out of nowhere, but they come out of action and they come out of, sorry, just, I just literally just yelled into the microphone. So for you, right. For you looking at your future, if you've only failed with your business, now, a lot of people that come on the show, they are, they, you know, they are on my show. They're on, they're on super agents live. You know, they are a super agent. They are, they're killing in their business, but a lot of people, when they started out, man, they didn't think they were going to make it. So for you, 
if you are if you've been struggling right and, and if you've only failed in the past you know how it, it, it may be a little bit impossible for you to see the possibility of success but the trick is that you got to keep trying that next step that you do might be the key to a better future it might be you know right we i talk i did a show on on the lifetime value of your clients and uh, I, again, I had somebody on a show come on and she tracked all her things. And literally from one sale, from one person, she did something stupid, like 45 deals from that one person. <clears throat> and what I was saying in that show is when you're out door knocking, right, that's what you should think about, right? What, what maybe propel you <clears throat> to, to keep going is the idea, the thought that that next door that you knock on, that may be worth 10 deals. That may be worth 20, 30, 40 deals. Right. Um, we, we've heard stories on the show where, uh, you know, a guy, a guy finds a person, a rental two years later, they come back and buy a two million dollar house. Seven years after that, you come back and buy a 40 million dollar house. <clears throat> so. So. You can't see around the corner, so you don't know what your future life, your future success is going to look like. You got to keep trying. Action. Action. All right. Uh, three. Inaction is scarier. <sighs> we all. Uh, let me. <clears throat> the vast majority of people will run towards pleasure and away from pain. Right. That's logical. <clears throat> I will tell you that the people who are successful, the guy who's driving that brand new <clears throat> Porsche Panamera. Uh, you know, you know that that Ferrari. I'll tell you what that guy, a girl. Those people, they do the opposite. They run run towards pain. The pain of action is acute. It's right in our face. You feel it all the time. It's hard to walk down the street, knocking on doors, trying to pe you know have people sell their house with you. Trying to you're truly trying to help people. But dude, it's a hundred degrees, or you know, or it's freezing. <clears throat> but Again, that's how the, the pain of action is acute. Now, inaction will always tempt us. We will always be tempted by inaction because it's slow. It's not painful, right? Uh, we don't consider refusing to choose to be a choice. Let me say it again because it, it's a little bit kooky. We don't consider refusing to choose to be a choice. We think we're safe if we don't expose ourselves to failure, and we don't appreciate the consequences of inaction because they're slow, they're chronic, they're less obvious. We don't see that. And that's what makes them insidious <laughs> because we don't see, you know, how to not taking action, right? <clears throat> inaction is actually killing us. You don't get to escape pain. The pain would, the, <clears throat> in, in terms of action, right? The pain that comes with action is acute. It, it'll give you battle scars. It'll make you grow. The pain that comes from inaction is low grade, right? It, it, you don't see it. You don't feel it. It will make you soft. It will make you fat. It will make you decay. Take action. Four, motivation follows action. Now, uh, in a lot of ways, um, I had relatively little motivation you know, again, I set myself up for a challenge to do something different, to do something that hopefully is a little bit more high quality than some of my stuff that I've done before. And hopefully you're finding this a little more high quality and stuff. But before I started that, you know, look, I didn't have a ton of motivation um, uh, and, and I didn't think I had too much to say or I think I, you know, what I had to say about action, I felt like I had said it before. <clears throat> but, uh, but, but, um, uh. I, I will say this is uh, my good friend the, and our good friend, Greg McDaniel. <clears throat> he will say this. He'll say, tell him what you're going to tell him, then tell him, and then tell him what you told him. And it's kind of kooky. <clears throat> he, 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 he talks about that in listing presentations, right? Tell him what you're going to tell him, tell him, and then tell him what you told him. <clears throat> so that's why I did this 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 post on on taking action because, you know, I've, I've said it before, but I felt like I could say it <clears throat> a little bit differently. And I'll tell you this. I'll tell you something. You know, I may do I may do uh, a, a, a more posts about taking action because it, it really is the most important thing. <clears throat> and even again, action is that's action. Forget not outcome, but action. <clears throat> and even if it's imperfect action, right? It goes back to the Eric Reese thing. Small and and Wright brothers, right? <clears throat> Test something, do it, 
and uh, and and make changes along the way. All right. <clears throat> so, and and a lot of times, and look, and again, so I I didn't have a lot of motivation when I started this post, when I started writing this. <clears throat> this little article, but you know, now I'm about 1600 words in and, and I, I'm honestly, I'm, I, I can't stop thinking different things to say. I'm trying to stay on track and it's always like this, right? For me, I, I don't feel like working out and probably you, I don't feel like working out until I've been at the gym for 15 minutes. Kind of like, that. I, I, you know, that's how it is for a lot of people. You know, lots of times I feel like I'm at night, right? I'm too tired to to get it on with my wife until we get going. And I'm like, I'm into this. Um, you know, and, a lot, and, and this is, I am the worst at this. I never want to go to the party, right? We, we get invited stuff all the time. And a lot of times I don't go because I just don't feel like, I don't know, you know, I just don't feel like going. But every single time, once I'm there, I'm like, I love it. I'm having a great time. So motivation and passion will follow you. It will get on, it will jump on your train if you have the balls to go without them, right? Just go, take action, do it. And you know what? You will get motivated. You will find passion for that thing. <clears throat> so look, number five is really just do something. It's impossible to give yourself a satisfying perfect <clears throat> in the abstract, right? Just in the idea. It is only in the flow of taking action, of doing something that your life can make sense. There are no abstract ideals out there. It's just life. Six, <clears throat> action creates courage. <clears throat> now, Matt, Matt, here's, I'm going re, to read a quote from Malcolm Gladwell. Courage is not something that you already have that makes you brave when the tough times start. Courage is what you earn when you've been through the tough times. And you discover they're not so tough after all. <clears throat> That's from his book, David and Goliath. <clears throat> Speaking of, you know, getting tough, um, for me, you know, <clears throat> I try to put myself in a corner. Now, <clears throat> I, I can go back in, you know, 2001, I got married, bought a house. <clears throat> you know, me and my, my wife played house for a little bit, right? We, we bought an older house, we fixed it up. Uh, and just, we were just living off our savings. <clears throat> and by the way, you know, you pay for a house and, uh, you know, <clears throat> so our savings started to dwindle. Um, <clears throat> and then all of a sudden we find out, my wife says, oh, I think I have cancer. I need to go to the doctor. She doesn't have cancer. She's having our kid. I'm like, oh my God, like what did I just get myself into? I have a wife, I have a house and now I have a kid. <clears throat> and, and I'll tell you, man, that, that being in the corner, that knowing that I had to sock my way out of it. That's a, I don't know. I, I don't really don't know what it is, but you know, uh, that's a thing that uh, the, the drive that made me go out and build my first big company or the first big thing that put me on the map <clears throat> being T erosion control. And so f for everybody, <clears throat> when we are forced into a corner, right, that's going to make us a little bit ballsier than we thought we could be. <clears throat> um, so, you know, for me, I'm always looking for ways to put myself <clears throat> into a corner now, right? Because if I'm not into a corner, you know, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I really can't scrumble up the, uh, the motivation to go out and really, really challenge myself. So, um, and look, and if I don't ever, you know, if, if I don't put myself into a corner and, and again, have to slug my way out of it, I don't know how I'd ever find out my true potential. That's really what I want to do. Same. I want to discover my true potential. And, you know, there's a saying that I use with my wife all the time. She hates it, but it says you're never younger you're never younger than you, than right now, than this moment, right? A moment from now, a minute from now, you're going to be older than you were a minute ago. We only have a certain window of, of vitality, of youth, of whatever, of drive, right? So for me, I want, I want to ring out as much as I can right now. Okay. Now, I started off with uh, with talking about <clears throat> talking about Spartans, right? And uh, oh, by the way, number seven, action beats the odds. So uh, here's a quote from Plutarch in, from his book, Sayings of the Spartans. Spartans do not ask how many are the enemy, but where are they? So <clears throat> more information, more often than not, it, it rarely pops up unless you're ready to act on it. The perfect plan doesn't exist. Now, <clears throat> Now, the more information 
almost never pops up unless you're ready to act. And it's so funny. It's so funny. If you listen to that, the, the, the uh, episode with Thatch Nguyen, he, he goes and says, hey, I want to find people that want to list their house in the next week. Now, I a little bit challenged him on that. But he said, yeah, that's what he does. And, he, and what he said to me was, he said, when you put that on your radar, he's like, you're not going to see people. He's like, it, it, something just happens. You're not going to see people who want to list their house in six months from now or even a month from now. You are going to find those people who want to list their house in the next week. So that information is going to pop up when you're ready to act on it. Now, <clears throat> Warren Buffett, we all know who he is. He wrote a, there's a biography called The Snowball. <clears throat> and, uh, and you know, he said that he had no grand plan. And he, Well, no. <clears throat> he had no grand plan when he was younger. He just knew that he wanted to make a ton of money. <clears throat> now, he even said in a different book that I... I'm sorry, that's on my bookcase somewhere. <clears throat> a different book that, that he wrote. He said, uh, and he told the world out there. You know, he told everybody. That's an important thing in terms of taking action. <clears throat> um we might get on that a little bit, but, uh, but basically he said, hey, I want to be a millionaire by the time I was 30. And he told people, if I'm not a millionaire by the time I'm 30, I'm going to kill myself. Now, I don't think that's a, a, a very healthy, but but he did it right. But but again, early on, he had no master plan. He just had a powerful urge and the willingness to take opportunities as they came. Now, did he believe that that notion that, hey, if I'm not a willing a millionaire by the time I'm 30, then I'm going to kill myself now. I don't know. He said it. So I got to, you know, I got to believe that there, there's some validity in that. But if, you know, again, talking about putting yourself in a corner, you know, if you believe something like that, if you had a strong belief similar to that, I mean, that's a terrible thing to do, but, or, or to think about, but you know, guess what? You're going to see opportunity just like that, that thatch new in guy, right? You will see opportunity that other people won't see. This for me has happened over and over in my life. <clears throat> now, uh, I don't know if you know who Ben Horowitz is, <clears throat> but he is a super duper successful venture capitalist. And he wrote a book. It's called The Hard Things About Hard Things. Now, here's, <clears throat> here's what he says. Quote, startup CEOs should not play the odds. When you're building a company, you must believe there's an answer and you cannot pay attention to your odds of finding it. You just have to find it. <clears throat> Right. This is again about about seeing after you. Again, he says it matters not whether your chances are nine in ten or one in a thousand. Your task is the same. You don't need to know if it will work, and you probably can't know. You need to try and find out. Your obstacles are yours to face. It doesn't matter how they compare to the obstacles in history or those of your friends or peers. It's a waste of time to consider anything except how you are going to overcome them. How does that apply in your life? How does that apply in your your career? You know, whether it's real estate or you're doing something else. <clears throat> and again, we have lots of people. Um, uh, I got a, I got an uh, email uh, the other day. Uh, and this guy uh, does mortgage loans. He's like, dude, like your show is so. And I might start having some mortgage people on here because you know it. it the stuff, especially like posts like this. This will apply to. I don't care whether you're you know a plumber, painter, or pie maker. <clears throat> taking action is the same. Uh, all right, eight, action will make you humble. Now, <clears throat> teenagers, and I was kind of like this, right? They think they know everything. And really it's because they haven't tested their own metal. They don't know anything. And so they feel like they know everything. <clears throat> I know CEOs that are like this. I know CEOs who are starting their first company. They come to me to get coaching, and uh, you know these are these are new. You know these are first time or second time entrepreneurs, and uh, and they they come to me telling me telling me all this stuff. I'm like, dude, I've done seven companies, right? <clears throat> you probably don't know what you think you know. <clears throat> you know, whether you're a teenager, or you're first time entrepreneur. Whatever, you know, you're just beginning to learn about theories, just about possibilities. <clears throat> they really haven't done. It really done, done anything. So they feel like they can do anything. This more applies to teenagers than, than first time entrepreneurs for the most part. Anyhow, sorry about the cough, man. It went away and now it's, I feel like it's coming back. I, I hope, I hope that it's not too distracting. And by the way, normally I can put myself on mute and cough, but it really is when I do these solo shows and I'm just talking, talking, talking. And I feel like I can't take a drink of water because it'll wreck the flow. I'm going to take one now. 
Um, and I don't want to do go back and edit all those. So in a, in a book, right, it's called Gates of Fire. It's uh, an older warrior. His name is uh, Dynakes. He addresses a younger warrior. Here's what he says. He says, my wish for you, Kalistos, is that you survive as many battles in the flesh as you already have fought in your imagination. Perhaps then you will acquire humility of a man and bear yourself no longer as a demigod you presume yourself to be. Now, <clears throat> action carries the potential to bring imagination and reality together. But only when you take it, only when you're consistent and, and persistent, right? <clears throat> Planning is, is really like that imagination. You know, you have to action blends about <clears throat> your imagination of what you want to happen, what can happen, you know, of your ideal future <clears throat> and reality mashes them together. So talking about the young, right after the young, whether it's a young entrepreneur or really like a teenager, like a young person, <clears throat> after they realize they can't do everything, they become disillusioned. They stop trying anything. I, I've seen this. I've seen this in companies, right? <clears throat> that failed, that failed, that failed. Geez you know, why should I try something new, right? You, they fall into a, a habitual pattern of inaction. And really, man, you know, going back to those parties, you know, why don't I go to all those parties? You know why? And this is, this is kind of bad on me. I, I, this, I need work on this. But most adults are dull. Most people are dull. And they're dull because it's probably because, you know, they don't do anything. They don't stretch themselves. They don't challenge themselves. They don't do anything because... They believe in their mind, their imagination. They they believe they're probably gonna fail, right? They mistook the early fail, failures in their career or life. They took that for a sign that they should stop trying. That's why they're bored. That's why they're boring. That's why they're depressed. That's why they're lethargic. <clears throat> you know, our failures should strengthen us. They should galvanize us. <clears throat> we should recognize that failures are, are, are opportunities to learn. They're opportunities to grow. All right. This last piece, I wasn't sure if uh, if I should put in here, but uh, but I did. You know, and so action isn't petty. You know, suckers try to win arguments. Non suckers try to win. <clears throat> A guy named Nasib Taleb said that action isn't concerned with opinions. It's dedicated to reality. Action doesn't leave room for gossip. Action couldn't be small, even if it tried. <clears throat> so briefly. I want to I want to explore two specific ways that you can train yourself to take more action. Okay, the first piece, and this is important: um, systems over goals. Most people <clears throat> give up before they get the reward. For you, if you can train yourself to be emotionally rewarded for actions taken rather than outcomes you're going to be able to lengthen the time you can spend in active failure and increase your chances of success. <clears throat> so look, a possible solution, <clears throat> how to do this, you know, is to re reward yourself for following your system rather than achieving a specific outcome. <clears throat> and I tell people that all the time, right? <clears throat> whatever you do, right? If you're in a door knocking or whatever, for, don't, don't be worried or concerned about the outcome. Just learn about the doing. Don't be married to an outcome. So for you, system. Select a system that, that you know will lead you to success and just follow it, right? So it's eating right versus the goal, right? This is, this is systems versus goals. You know, uh, eating, uh, I'm sorry, a system is eating right. The goal is losing 20 pounds. The, the system, building a business versus the goal of achieving financial independence. Going on dates versus, versus having a successful relationship. The first are systems and those second ones are goals. Goal-oriented people, they exist in a state of continuous and continual pre-success failure. Pre-success failure, you're always failing until you succeed, right? If, if your goal is learning to, to, to lose 20 pounds, but you're following your system of eating right, you're you're in pre you're failing right because you haven't achieved that goal but you're it's it's pre success failure so f you know so again try to reward yourself for uh for uh, uh just doing the task just taking the action now this second piece <clears throat> I got from from a different guy <clears throat> now 
Um, and I look, I have to be totally honest with you. I've heard this notion before and uh, I haven't tried it. I have talked to a few people that have done this or a vari- variant of this, and that's why I'm I'm including it. Um, so here's 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 what it is. It, it's it's called input deprivation week. Go for one week, seven days, with zero information consumption. Even this, even this podcast, man. You know, however much I hate to say that, <clears throat> but I want you to get into you, right? <clears throat> so so. This is a pretty painful, uh, again, I haven't done it, but I know people who have done it. So if, if, you know, try to live an entire week without information input. Now, and what that means is that is for one week. Don't read any books. Don't read blogs. Don't read newspapers. Don't go on Facebook. Man, I mean, even if it's just a post, don't go on it. Don't stop watching TV. Stop watching movies. No listening to radio. No Twitter. No information. It's just output. You know, that's all, you know, to get yourself in this action taking mode, if you take away input, what's going to happen, right? You should get output. If you force yourself to spend an entire week with yourself and the people that immediately are surrounding you, first and foremost, this is going to force you into action by stripping away every activity you run in order to avoid actually doing the work. You know, you should be doing right. People race towards pleasure and run away from pain. So, so what if you took a, from yourself, you took away those, those, those pleasure zones that you ran to, whether that's <clears throat> jumping on a podcast. Uh, I hate saying that, man. I want you, I, I want, I want all you guys to listen to my show, but <clears throat> right. But you know, what do you do? Instead of going out and knocking on doors, and I, I, you know, there's lots of stuff. I just, that's just, you know, knocking on doors in your real estate business is just, the, it's, it's super immediate. You can get immediate results. It's also really hard. Um, so stop, take away those pools where you can run to and you will get output. You will, you will, if you can do this for one week and look, maybe you start small, maybe, maybe you start for two days or three days. Oh, you know, maybe over the weekend, right? Maybe just a Saturday, Sunday, try this. And if it works out, you know, see how many more days you can go. But, you know, what's going to happen? You're, you're going to increase your mindfulness. You know, it's going to increase the respect you have for your own ideas. You'll have more ideas. You know, you'll, you'll start to, you know, some of those unsolvable life problems that, uh, you know, they might start to make sense to you, right? You, you might have a, a better appreciation for for shows like this one. You may have a better appreciation for your wife, for your husband, for your kids. <clears throat> now, look, I you know, it, it might sound too good to be true, but the people that I've talked to, um, they, they, they say it works. <clears throat> um, I just have to, I can't, I do, I can't do it. I cannot do it. I have too much stuff going on. And look, and you know what? Uh, and I don't, I, and for me, look, I don't really need to do it, right? I'm, I'm, de- I take action. <clears throat> this is for the people who are stuck, not taking action. So, you know, what are the, some of the things, how do you do this? You know, um, one thing that, that, that I recently did, <clears throat> and when I say recently, a couple months ago, I, on my, on my phone, on my iPad, I, I deleted all my consumption apps, right? <clears throat> I deleted Facebook. Uh, I deleted Twitter, uh, at least off my my iPad, not my not my phone. But you know, <clears throat> delete the apps. I'd, I'd ask you guys to do this: delete the apps that you reflexively go to when you min- have a minute of free time. <clears throat> right when you're standing in line. For me, I'm standing in line to get a, a piece of pizza at Costco, and I open up my Twitter feed and and flow through it. So you know, delete that. You know, maybe you maybe you know, is it possible that you'll start to increase your own output? Um, <clears throat> you know. Uh, I walk into, for me, I walk into my office and I immediately see, uh, you know, books. Uh, yeah, I have tons. I, I read a lot. <clears throat> so, you know, maybe for you, if you, you know, move your books and magazines around, right? If they're on your nightstand or, or, or whatever <clears throat> uh, on your desk, like move them, put them, put a stack them up somewhere where you, where you can't see them. Don't allow yourself to <clears throat> say, oh man, let's, I got to just read that one article. You know, <clears throat> this is a really, really, uh, number three is carry a notebook with you. Um, now I carry Evernote on my phone because I constantly have ideas that I should do, right? <clears throat> Ways to goose, to, gro- to get more people to listen to my show. You know, I get n- new ideas on new products that, <clears throat> that I should create for you guys. So I use, I use Evernote. If you don't use Evernote, um, uh, d- get a notepad, right? The old pen and paper and, uh, and start to, start to 
write your ideas down. Um, if you're a TV person, for me, I, I don't watch TV. I have cable, um, uh, mainly because my wife likes to watch the cooking show, and my kids like to watch uh, like Dirty Jobs, but um, I don't watch TV. But if you are a TV watcher, take the batteries out of your remote. Right, So when you have that urge to flick on the TV, you're going to have to get your booty up and go find batteries. So it's a little bit of a barrier to TV that, that uh, hopefully will save your willpower pool from draining as you, as you stare down the remote thinking about the Game of Thrones or, or you know, going through that you know, Breaking Bad series again or whatever. <clears throat> so if you did this, um, it may be the hardest thing you do all year. Now, the benefits may, may not be obvious on day two. But but on day six, I guarantee you, even though I've not done it, I guarantee you your output is going to be 100 times more than it is today. Your focus will be to turn on production instead of consumption. consumption. You'll become a giver instead of a taker. You'll see your addiction to novelty and useless information plainly. So, and remember, this is only a weekend or a week. It's not, it's, I'm not suggesting you do this as a crazy lifestyle. Look, I love books. I love podcasts. I love learning new things. I consume information like crazy. I'm constantly consuming. And, and I found when I stop consuming, right? When I go on a walk, we have a place, a, a place up in the mountains. <clears throat> when I walk in, on, in the woods by myself, I have a podcast going. Uh, when I go with my kids, I don't. And I, I swear, man, I, I get different ideas. And I, I need to be better at, at depriving myself of, of input. I just want to be the best I can be. And I feel like uh, by consuming more information, it's better. But, but, but you know, not always. Um, so look, for you and your consumption stuff, um, um, I really think that you're going to appreciate if you can do this, you're going to understand. You're going to be able to appreciate quality information like this show. Uh, sorry, I keep plugging it. Uh, uh, and, and you're going to be able to ignore the rest. And, and for me, I do that all the time, man. You know, when I have a, uh, a podcast that I listen to, it's good, 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 good. And then it goes on sort of a bad streak. I, look, I, I give the guy the benefit of the doubt. But if it gets, you know, if, if they have four or five shows back to back that are not good, um, I stop listening. For a little while, man. So anyhow, look, guys, I know that hopefully you understand after this that action is important. I do know for a fact every single one of you guys want to be better at taking action. And 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 I, I, I hope that you've gotten something out of it, out of this episode that uh, that uh, that you didn't have before. And I truly hope that you can go and take take action make your business a better business make your life a better life make it all right guys hey look go and do something implement something in your business today thanks for tuning in thanks for listening i will see you on on uh, on the next show let's go